Well, thank you very much, Tim. I won't take too much of your time. I mean, the disadvantage you've had today is that I've been here all day, um, which it makes it slightly more difficult, I have to say. And I don't really want to go through the, um, the whole meeting, but I do want to say uh, I want to do very fundamental um, thank yous, which are entirely appropriate, I believe, at this stage of the day, particularly to our chairman, Tim Brinkstock, um, because he arranges the, the National Equine Forum, and this is our 27th Equine Forum. Uh, it, it also, I think, everybody has contributed towards selling out in advance and having a waiting list, so I hope you feel that it was worth waiting for uh, and that it has indeed fulfilled your ambitions for the day. But I think it does demonstrate what the forum can achieve and the people it can bring together uh, and the information it can provide. So I hope you felt that uh, that has been of use. We built, of course, on some of the innovations introduced last year with a website that provided a, that very strong platform for communication through our regular visitors because actually we do need to pe keep people in touch throughout the year because it helps, helps us to decide too about what what are the current issues, things we haven't maybe answered, uh, and what the, the practical issues that you all face out there. And being able to offer those again, I think, well, especially for those unable to be in the room and have jo joined us via the live streaming, to increase the opportunity for, for them to communicate as well and to take advantage of what they've been listening to and seeing. I hope you agree that it, was, it wasn't just the program that looked interesting, but the day has indeed been thought-provoking uh, and absorbing. And there have been some excellent presentations and some very good discussion, if I may say so. Uh, and I'm delighted that the, the part of the panel, certainly that I was involved in, I thought was a, a really good um, discussion and interaction. And all of them addressed the way that things are changing in the horse world. And we had that right from the beginning, and I'm, I was grateful that so the minister, Lord Gardner, uh, managed to come, and I think he was hugely relieved to be able to listen to a bit more, um, because normally they're whistled out as soon as they finish speaking. But he is genuinely interested in how the industry promotes itself, sees itself, and works together, because that will be really important for him to be able to come up uh, with the better answers uh, to the situations that they now find themselves in. And I'm not going to go back on any of that. I found that really interesting. <clears throat> and I hope what it does is, is it really does alert people to the questions they need to ask and the spaces they need to keep an eye on in order to be able to help answer uh, their questions, particularly those who might want to be traveling uh, in the near future. And I think the all of those issues about what, how it affects the, um, the equine owner, and Pamela Thompson, as an owner, obviously raised some of those issues, and I, I know that that's very keen that people should make use of the website uh, in order to keep themselves up to date. Uh, I'm also very conscious that um, Stuart Everett has been hard at work, um, very hard at work. He's, he was at the Horse Trust last week with a seminar there, and he's been here. And we, and, and this forum has been going for 27 years, and I rather suspect that equine databases have been on the program for nearly every one of those. So I, I think if you take away anything from today, it exists. It is here. It can be used. And we've been, I think steered and reminded about how to use it and to use it properly. I, I'm, um, I'm an, uh, more of a dinosaur than most. I, as you've heard me say before, I don't have an email address, so you know, we don't go there. But there is no doubt that the technology only really makes sense. You only really use it when you recognize how it's going to improve your life. Or if, in this case, possibly not necessarily your life, but the life of the in the horse that you're looking after. And if that is the focus that is required, and maybe um, it is even Brexit that will, will focus us on the need to make very good use of the technology that is now available, that gives us an enormous amount of scope to do more. 
And I think that's particularly true in welfare terms. It's particularly true in terms of our ability to understand where, people, where horses are, where people are, how they behave. And I hope, because this was a question I asked, that it will allow us to find those people that in the past we haven't been able to find or haven't signed on. And given that that figure is amazingly high, and it's no good us because we represent people who are probably already involved in an organization, are signed up for something, can be identified, can be reached. But there are an awful lot of owners out there who, who don't fit under that. And how we promote the level of technology, which in this day and age, they might actually find useful and would give them confidence because it ha comes um, with, with that, uh, as you say, not Dr. Google, but it comes with a proper uh, experience and, and regulation and justification. So I hope that, that what Stuart was telling us is that we will be able to take advantage of and make best use of for the future. And for all of those speakers who came after, actually, for all of them, that technology will make a real difference in how they um, promote and continue with some of the research that they showed and how they deliver that research. I hope you find the, um, the panel interesting in terms of how charities can play a role, because they too will need to make very good use of that register uh, and how it works for them, how it allows them to make better contacts with those that they can't reach. But we, I think we probably did establish that there are gaps, that charities will be needed, and people's ability to relate to them and support them, uh, which spreads the word more widely, uh, is something that we still need them for and to increase the level of education and maybe focus on that a bit more in terms of spreading the knowledge that is needed more widely. I, the, all of those issues that uh, came afterwards in terms of the thoroughbred racing welfare initiatives, uh, my one question which I haven't quite had the answer to but I'm, I might just when I go to Cheltenham next week, I think I may go and watch the vet, vet checks and see what happens. The, those of us who, in the eventing world, the vet checks were quite serious. And if, if your horse took so much as a slightly off step, that was you at the door. Um, I shall be interested to see how they define that in the long term. <laughs> Mind you, we've all seen racehorses that looked on three legs when they left the yard and raced perfectly well afterwards. So, but it would be a very interesting and, and a really useful addition to our knowledge base, I think. And all of our speakers um, this afternoon have increased our understanding what to look for in terms of exercise and fitness. Although I have an, a question in terms of um, athletes, I was one of those things that I'm, we used to be hugely embarrassed about when people refer to you as an Olympic athlete. No, I wasn't the Olympic athlete. That was the horse. <laughs> And far too many, and it was only when I started race riding that I realized how unfit most of the other riders were, which I thought was really quite interesting, but it, I think we're beginning to learn that part of the equation, and that actually everything goes better if you are fitter as a rider, if you understand what that means. But nobody asked the question, is, is it inevitable that everybody rides with stirrups on uneven holes? Mm -hmm. Do you really ride with them on the same holes? Always? No, you don't. I want to know what that means and whether it is actually means that if you ride on um, different holes, does it mean you are actually physically unfit? But well, I'll leave that as, as a future um, lecture. Um, and I'm, I was really, I have to say, the, um, Andrew Hemsley's lecture on... on um, stereotypical behavior I found particularly relevant and very interesting and I hope you all did too because I thought that was um, uh, one of those areas that people don't often want to talk about therefore you don't ask the right questions because you don't quite know where that's going to go 
Uh, and if you're not careful, people come around and say, not buying your horses, they've all got funny, you know, funny habits. So you don't talk about them. Um, so that was a very useful uh, addition to my knowledge, that's for sure. And thank you, Claire, for supporting the, that national equestrian survey. It is difficult. I mean, uh, the forum here is an attempt to bring together the, the sector uh, and interested parties. But this is a much better uh, way of reaching uh, a much greater number of people in terms of what is happening out there and, and a better feel for those who are interested and active uh, in the industry. And in order to make it work, people have to respond. And that's absolutely key because that will make a difference in the long run. And I, you said you'd, you'd gone down the online route and I hope again that will be part of technology will be able to improve that level of knowledge and understanding. And as I think, as I mentioned before, the link with some of those who perhaps don't engage with other organizations, there are tech um, shops out there, there are pro providers out there who will have met these people and maybe have not asked the question, do you belong to any organization? Maybe it's just a question that would be worth asking for them. Um, you know, when people come in and they feel that maybe they don't know enough, that they could actually uh, bring them into the fold and get them to um, use the technology uh, as and when. And, and finally, we're delighted um, when, that Simon Curtis won the award, uh, the Colin Spedding Award last year. I'm particularly pleased that he came back to lecture us because although that was, I know, a very rapid um, route through the history to modern uh, farriery and onwards in the future. Uh, it is well worth reminding ourselves that the no foot, no horse statement is every bit as true today as it ever has been and is always the, the place to start. Um, for the future, I mean, I think materials will be one of those issues where uh, research will continue to be made. And I'm I'm always intrigued by the, the use of studs, which I rather ignorantly, we used to use very few. Nowadays, they seem to use loads of them, and they're enormous. I'm sure I don't know. I wouldn't want to be stood on by them. Um, but that kind of development of, of knowledge, and that reminds us, too, how much they knew in the past, uh, how much they understood about what a shoe could do uh, and what it added. So sometimes we don't, you know, it takes a long time to learn anything really new. So Sam, thank you so much for that. Um, but as I say, reminding us of the, the real importance of farriers in our lives um, is, to, is very welcome. Now, of course, we need a successor in terms of a lecturer. So, um, and I'm delighted to be announcing the winner of the Sir Colin Spedding Award. And of course, this annual award, um, it, it is very much, it's presented when there is a candidate of sufficient merit uh, to an individual or an organization that has made an exceptional contribution to the world of horses, ponies, or donkeys. And again, this year we have had a strong field of nominations and we have a representative of our winner here today and we'll find out a little bit more about our winner shortly. But you, as, um, as a delegate of the National Equine Forum, as individuals, will be able to make uh, a nomination for the 2020 Sir Collins Bedding Award uh, on your feedback form, which I hope you will have with you. And those watching on the live streaming can make a nomination via the website. The recipient will, of course, get a, a, reception, um, a certificate on, of recognition to keep permanently, uh, and of course the bronze stag beetle, which is theirs for a year, and I'm thrilled to see he's back here because it's always a bit of a um, <laughs> bit of a responsibility that one. Um, the, the award, of course, is made in memory of Sir Colin Spedding. I mean, he was the late chairman of the forum, but that doesn't really cover what he did in order to for this forum to have reached the stage that it has. Uh, and that is why we always felt it was appropriate to have a, an award that, that remembers not just him and his sayings, but him and his determination to get the equestrian sector 
to come together and to think more as one block. And, and I hope you think that today we are fulfilling his ambitions for this forum to do exactly that. So can I now uh, invite Professor Pat Harris as vice chair uh, to read out the citation? Thank you, ma'am. I'm really pleased to be able to announce that our winner of the Sir Collins Bedding Award is Gordon Wesley, who's a fellow of the Association of British Riding Schools. And I said, it's presented to Gordon in recognition of his long-standing dedication to the development of the equine sector in his roles as equestrian coach, chief examiner, and trustee of various organizations, as well as his tireless work to increase accessibility to training for people from all walks of life, both at home and abroad. Unfortunately, due to ill health, Gordon cannot be with us today, but there is a picture of the presentation on our screen that Georgina Crossman, the former administrator, presented him with his certificate a few weeks ago. Gordon, I hope you are watching today on live streaming, and I hope you can see this, Gordon. I'd like to send our thoughts and my personal thoughts are with you, and many congratulations. We're very proud that Gordon is represented here today by his daughter, Boo Pao. So, Boo, please come and accept the certificate. Don't believe you. <laughs> 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 